Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one. Enough is enough. Written by JCB112. Barrier 5 was yet another world to be put under the yoke of the Trillicians, a proud, enigmatic race of warriors who had begun pushing for more and more in recent years. They weren't content with mere territorial expansion, however, no. They wished for greater things. They wished for sovereignty not just over their own, but over the species they so designated as primitive, as lesser. It was on this world, but another nondescript world in the eyes of the Trisilicians, that saw the final straw would be broken. And it wasn't another soldier being killed in the mud, or another combatant lost in the void. It was a confluence of many, many factors. There was the claims of the false idolhood and benevolence of Trillicium superiority rooted in the acts of charity, falsely conflating their petty circuses and tricks with true power. It was the undermining of wholly distinct, unique, and beautiful cultures, replacing it with their own one-note backwards and one-dimensional worldview. It was how they retreated civilians on a day-to-day -day basis, how their occupation forces stood by, glaring, holding weapons against the head of every Perian who just wished to return to normalcy, and the rooting out of anyone deemed suspicious, or just because a lone god wished to vent out their anger and frustrations. It was the cry of a child being dragged away from their mother, slowly being rooted out and taken toward the truck, bound for the re-education facility. It was at this one specific moment, this one slither in time, that Grand Admiral Varnus Vati, supreme commander of all Trisilian forces within the galaxy, would find themselves suddenly transplanted into... One moment, they were in their office, and the next, they were in this unknown backwater world in the middle of conversion, looking around. They saw the city streets around them silent, with only the scene of the crying child being torn from their mother superimposed under a spotlight. It almost felt like they were being transplanted into a freeze frame of a movie. A lone figure stood at the other end of the road. It was the only figure to be animated, the only figure to have the howling winds affect them in any way. As their trench coat fluttered against the chilly evening winds, it took them a few solid minutes, but soon they began walking approaching menacingly with unknown intent. We have been watching, Trisilium. We have hoped that there might have been some instance that you would give up this pathetic charade of an empire and return to perhaps something more reasonable. But time and time again, you've proved just how stubborn, just how stupid you are. And this moment, the human pointed at the scene before him. This one instance, you've crossed the threshold. You think that just because you've cured some incurable disease, solved a few global crises on this world, acted like shepherds, that these people have any obligation to return the favor, that these people, who by their very nature, as sapient beings demand equal and irreconcilable respect of sovereignty, autonomy, and self-determination should count out to the likes of you. The human Commodore spoke. No, he practically chided out, like a father would to some unruly child. The world around him seemed to shake at each and every word. Grow up, act your age, play with those your weight and class. If well and truly believe that you are this, what do you call it now? The human reached his hand into the empty air, flicked his fingers, causing a propaganda poster half a street away to manifest within his hands. Enlightened and powerful species, unchallenged by any. The alien before him began backing away slowly, only to be stopped by an invisible barrier that prevented their movements on all sides. Or are you too afraid to face the facts? That your people are incompetent as they come? You know, we don't tend to like to interfere. 
It sets a dangerous precedent for a civilization of our caliber to lower ourselves to the station. To even consider talking to you via this primitive form of audiovisual communication. But suffice to say, you're too primitive to understand any other medium of communication. The human flicked his fingers once more, the skies above the alien now turning a dark and terrifying gray, before turning dark in its entirety. There was nothing left of the sun above them, nothing but the incubus of some unknown horrific thing. It wasn't a machine, it couldn't be a creature. What it was, a cosmic force beyond the realm of any civilization to tame. And yet, here it was, so casually brought to bear. I'm going to speak to you in a language that perhaps you just about smart enough to understand. The human's voice grew colder, darker. At this point, it felt as if the entire street was emanating his voice, as if his voice was emanating from the heavens itself. Get out, leave these worlds and never return. If you dare pull the stunt again. The ground beneath the alien shifted, soon reassembling into a familiar sight. Their own homeworld, more specifically, the academy they trained at. And what's more, the skies above them retaining the distinct darkness that the human had called on on Peria 5. I will teach you the true discrepancy between primitive and civilized. The Grand Admiral would find herself waking up in a pool of sweat. She'd somehow fallen asleep in her stately office as she shook off the remnants of what was so clearly a horrid nightmare. No doubt instigated by her concerns over the conversion progress on Peria 5. It wasn't long before she got herself back to her senses, took a sip of water, and looked out the window. Yet what she saw wasn't the same beautiful blue and green garden world, her home world, no. It was a sphere, covered in its entirety of the same strange black substance, entity, thing, from her dreams. She dropped her glass of water, the shards of crystal shattering against her feet, as she could only gasp in disbelief, only for the voice to reverberate with her own head, as if something was speaking to her own mind. Heed our warning, Grand Admiral. With another blink of her eyes, the planet seemed to return to normal. She looked around, gasping for air as she stomped her foot once, yelling into the empty confines of her office. Who? Who are you? What in the void are you? Who I am has no bearing on this matter. You haven't even earned the privilege of learning my name, let alone my title. Just know that humanity is watching, and humanity will not be so forgiving in our next eventual encounter. End of story. Story number two. The Ransom of Kev, written by Ack1308. Con Lafferty wiped the grimy sweat off his brow as he shaded his eyes. Was that Kev emerging from the tree line? It had been three days since his son had gone missing, and the boy's mother was starting to get antsy about it. Personally, Con was fine with Kev going off and finding something to do away from the farm. The boy had a knack for breaking the machinery and repurposing it to do things it surely was not intended to do. And he surely possessed a wild streak as wide as the galactic belt that filled the sky over the colony every night. But Con would have been in touch a happier if Kev had simply left word where he was bound for, if only so they knew how long he was going to be. A crack of thunder split the cloudless sky above, and Con stared upwards in confusion. Unseasonal storms were not uncommon in the colony, but no clouds loomed over the horizon, and it was the sixth day before the mail ship was due to touch down and bring tidings from far-flung family. Still, descending against the blue vault of the sky, he saw the ungainly vessel, looking set to land at the pad they maintained. Lander, he bellowed. We've got a lander. People flocked from far and wide across the colony as the ship descended jerkily towards the landing pad. Con's brows creased as he got a better look. It didn't appear of human make. The machinery seemed simultaneously more advanced and less well taken care of than the mail ship. Con didn't know any non-humans. He'd never met any. 
though he'd seen a few from a distance once. Why they'd be landing at this backwater colony, he knew not. Fortunately, curiosity was the best easily sated with answers, and he would have his answers once they landed and emerged. With a rattling crunch, the ship landed on the pad, the engines cut out, and the hatch opened. Two aliens emerged. One was tall and skinnier than anyone Con knew, while the other one was short and distinctly round in the middle. Their skin color was a faded purple for the tall one and an iridescent blue for the sawn off companion. Between them, the aliens wrestled a familiar figure down the short ramp. Kev! shouted Con. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Let me go! Let me go! snapped Kev and yanked at one of the alien hands holding him. Jeesh! You don't need to shove me all the way. Yes, we do. One of the aliens spoke, or rather, a module built into the clothing that he's speaking for him. You have nearly wrecked our ship a dozen times and made our lives a misery. Go back to your kind. We do not wish your presence any longer. Khan could almost detect a certain bitterness to the creature's tone. Stepping forward, he addressed the odd pair. Your pardon, please. But what was my boy doing aboard your craft in the first place? Hey, they kidnapped me, Pa, yelled Kev. Sit down out the field ways and told me that they'll fly me wherever I wanted. And told them about myself. Con turned a stern gaze at the two aliens. Is this true? Did you adopt my son under false pretenses for fell purposes? The pair stared at each other, then back at Con. We, uh, we are supremely apologetic wailed the shorter one through his own translation module. We only wish to return your house-spawned youth and return to a quieter space. We have learned our lesson. Nevermore will we attempt to hold humans to ransom. Indeed, Con held out his hand. And where is the ransom you owe us then? Again, the mismatched duo stared at one another. Pay the human, the taller one said hastily, just so that we can leave. Moments later, Khan stood staring at a pile of precious metals and artworks that he knew for a fact would pay off the colony's debts and allow them to construct the new hydroelectric installation the engineers had been talking about. Is it enough? pleaded the short one. Is it? Aye, uh, it'll do for now, Khan followed. Go and never darken our skies again. Gladly, exclaimed the alien. With its friend, it scrambled aboard the craft and the hatch closed behind them. In almost unseemly haste, the drives slid off and the craft descended into the cloudless sky from whence it originated. As the colonists marveled over the sudden windfall of wealth, Con looked around and scratched his head. Now, uh, where did Kev go? On board the alien craft, hidden behind a ventilation grill, Kev grinned and hefted his multi-tool. He was having far too much fun to give up now. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. 